My name is Gerald Schroeder. I have, I have a, thank God, a strong science background from MIT, Master's Institute of Technology, Bachelor's, Master's, PhD, seven years in the physics staff, seen a whole range of atomic bombs detonated, moved to Israel, met my wife, Barbara Sofer, a great writer, and uh, then uh, teach Torah and science. So luckily, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky that I have the two that come together. Okay, so Gerald Schroeder is an Orthodox Jewish physicist who's done work in his field of study and teaches the Torah and science at the College of Jewish Studies Aish HaTorah's Discovery Seminar. I probably butchered the shit out of that. His video title indicates that he's going to prove the Bible to us as it being accurate in five minutes. Let's see what he's got. And one of the questions is a, that I'm asked as a scientist is how can a scientist really believe that there's something that we refer to usually as God. You know, is this metaphysical whatever acting in the world or producing the world? And the irony is, the question's really a non-starter. Science has, in fact, discovered God. And you can talk to the hardline atheists and they will say, it looks like science has indeed discovered God. Ooh, man, I would love to hear this. I mean, it's supposedly it's converted the hardline atheists who are still atheist for some reason, but science proves God's existence. Oh boy, we're in for a real treat. Hit me with it. And how would that be? Well, if you take the trouble of going to the web and, and they're typing WMAP, the initials for, for a satellite, it's a diagram that shows the development of the universe from the creation over time. It's a timeline. Every word on that diagram comes from the NASA site. It is the condensed knowledge of the scientific community of how the universe created and how it got to where we are today. Each of the lines, the vertical lines, is another billion years. Okay, you start from a burst of energy at the extreme left side of the diagram and you end up at the far end with the oval. The oval is to indicate expansion in all directions. Of course, because it's a timeline, we can't show that on, on a single piece of paper. We see here, most amazingly, that on the extreme left edge, it shows a beginning to the universe. Now go back less than 50 years. If I were teaching that at Tech, I might have, you know, a person could lose tenure saying that there was a creation of the universe. It sounds like it's Bible. Because less than 50 years ago, the overwhelming scientific opinion was the universe is eternal. There was never a beginning. The Bible is wrong from the very first sentence. Um, sorry, but no. No, uh, a lot has definitely changed over the last 50 years in terms of human understanding, but the expanding universe with 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 an actual beginning of time that's that's been around a lot longer than 50 years but just to just to keep you going on what you were saying uh 100 years ago yes 100 years ago the conventional view was that the universe was static and unchanging and of course this is before edwin hubble discovered an expanding universe red shifting galaxies and uh, not too long after that einstein theory of relativity you know, all, yeah, all that. But I'm, I'm going to give you credit because it's something I'm, I'm actually kind of relieved to see. Uh, you at least acknowledge real science up until this point, and this is definitely a switch from what I'm used to. I'm, I'm always glad to hear, even a, you know, a religious person that doesn't think Noah wrote a dinosaur. I mean, it's always nice to hear you have somewhat rational <laughs> religious people speak on this. Please continue. And then we discovered suddenly Arno Penzies and Robert Wilson, the Bell Labs in New Jersey, the northeast of the U.S., discovered the echo of the Big Bang, the energy left over, which George Gamow 60 years ago predicted that if there had been a universe created hot and small, it would have exploded, and the energy would get more and more dilute. And, the, and Penzies and Wilson, these Arno Penzies and Robert Wilson, discover this energy that had been predicted overnight. The Bible got it right. There was a beginning to the universe. Well, again, no. Wrong, sir. Wrong. The Bible didn't get it right because like the first verse of the Bible says, Genesis 1-1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. That's wrong. The earth doesn't predate the universe. Light doesn't predate the sun and the stars. Life doesn't predate heat and light. And I think I think it's totally justified to come down on these specifics to a person like this 
uh, who has the credentials that he does. Schroeder has the credentials. He isn't in the science denying business like the creationists are. He acknowledges reality up until a point. What I'm doing is merely trying to push that point a bit further. Now the black in the diagram is nothing. It's not a vacuum. Vacuums are within that diagram, within that cone of expansion. Vac vacuums are empty space and space is something. The black of the paper around the diagram is nothing. It doesn't fit in our human brain because humans think in a box, a box made of time, space, and matter slash energy. No human, as clever as they might be, as expansive as they might be, thinks out of that box. So when we say outside that diagram is nothing, we can use the words, but we can't conceive of nothing. It doesn't fit in the human brain. How are we going to have this idea, is there a God or not? Notice that the creation force isn't a three-letter word, G-O-D. If you look at the words carefully, it's a quantum fluctuations. That understanding was first brought down by Ed Tryon, brilliant human being, in the journal Nature, almost 40, 50 year, 40 years ago. The universe allows creation of something from nothing, provided you have the laws of nature, the quantum fluctuation. Tryon realized, and he published in the journal Nature, one of the two leading peer-reviewed journals in the world, that you can create something from absolute nothing, provided you've got the laws of nature, quantum physics and the laws of relativity, and others, the laws of nature. So look what science has discovered. We can create the universe from absolute nothing, provided we have the, the, the forces of nature. Now the laws of nature, the forces of nature aren't physical, they act on the physical. So if they create the universe, that means they predate the universe. So now we have a set of forces, we call them the laws of nature, that are not physical, that are able to act on the physical, they create the physical from absolute nothing. And they predate the universe, which means they predate our understanding of time. Put that together, it sounds very familiar. If you haven't noticed it, that's the biblical definition of God. Okay, 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 okay. That was almost a complete perversion from the understandings of the origins of the universe. This is yet another logical fallacy. Specifically, an argument from ignorance. It's just because you cannot explain something doesn't mean it was fucking magic. You're, you're going back on me. I was giving you credit, but you're, 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 you're backing into creationist arguments here. It's just a, a complete logical fallacy. Okay, even even if it, even if it were possible to rationally conclude magic as a causal agent for universal origins that in no way justifies somehow concluding that it was biblical magic that was the cause of that. I mean, how did you, how you got from the universe exists to a God done it is, is a stretch on its own. Now, how you got from a God done it to, obviously, it was the God of the Bible. It was Yahweh, the God of Judaism and Christianity. That's not science. That's religion. I mean, one could just as easily feel justified in saying that it was a, a cosmic space troll or an interstellar warlock or, or anything absurd like that. But what reason could you possibly have to justify believing it was a specific God? There's only one nuance that's left, left, left hanging. We can talk about it another time, perhaps. Is that which created the universe, those forces, active in the universe? But up to that point, science says, we, you are correct. The, the definition of the biblical God is predates time, outside of time. God is not a physical being, is, is a force, and it creates the universe. You'll notice that the opening chapter of Genesis, the only name for God is Elohim, God as manifest in the universe. Science has indeed discovered the biblical God. Well, we just need one part left, crucial, that which created the universe is also active in the universe itself. The very fact that you're watching this now pretty much establishes that point. Whoa, 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 whoa. The fact that we watch your video magically ties all these loose ends together? What the fuck? You lose! Good day, sir!